Well, hi there. This is an Egyptian false cobra. That is not to be confused with the false water cobra, like my pal Shelby here. This is a completely different snake from a completely different part of the world. And where I would argue that the false water cobra is, in actuality, just a snake that happens to look like a banded water cobra, the Egyptian false cobra probably looks like a cobra because it is actually a cobra mimic. You see, the false water cobra comes from South America. There are no cobras in South America. In fact, there are no wild cobras in the Americas at all. Cobras live in Africa and Asia. And predators in Africa and Asia have been selected upon to avoid snakes that stand up tall and flare out a hood. And that means that any snake in Africa or Asia that happens to have the ability to stand up and flare out a hood derives some benefit from the fact that predators avoid cobras. This is the case even for snakes that are themselves not highly dangerous, such as the Egyptian false cobra. This is called Batesian mimicry, and we have a whole video about this because it's so cool. But predators in South America, with exceedingly few exceptions, have never been around cobras, nor have their ancestors ever encountered cobras. So why would the false water cobra mimic a cobra? There is some possibility that the distant ancestors of the current predators of false water cobras coexisted with cobras, but the odds are probably better that they didn't. And that false water cobras are not cobra mimics at all. So why would they look so much like cobras? The reality is that they probably look like cobras for the same reason that cobras look like cobras. Big hoods make you bigger and scarier than you really are. Lots of snakes can flare out their ribs. Flying snakes can do it for the whole length of their bodies to form essentially like a big long wing. I've seen my false water cobra do this when he's basking. And if you do this when facing a danger, that danger just might pick a less frightening target. This works for false water cobras not because true cobras exist, but for the same reason that it worked for cobras in the first place. This is called convergence. False water cobras are not actually false cobras. But this snake, the Egyptian false cobra, is a legitimate false cobra and not a false false cobra. Like false water cobras. Okay. And true cobras, I suppose. And where the false water cobra has a hood but does not assume the upright cobra posture, these do. They also will do the loud, often open-mouthed hissing typical of cobras. These guys put on a heck of a cobra display. They're even more closely related to cobras than are false water cobras. Cobras are elapid snakes. False water cobras are colubrid snakes. But these guys are in the family Lamprophiidae, the same family that includes the African house snakes and stiletto snakes. Not elapids, but closely related. But like false water cobras, these guys are rear-fanged venomous. It won't kill you, uh, but you won't miss that it happened. But is the Egyptian false cobra a good pet? And is it the best pet snake with cobra in its name for you? To figure this out, we'll have to give the Egyptian false cobra a score based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, the reality is that it can vary. Some individuals, uh, like this one actually, are very handleable. But this is actually usually because they're cold. And most do not like to be handled at all. Oh, and they're venomous. So it's uh, difficult to put a number on this one. Rattlesnakes get a one. Uh, these are safer, but actually considerably harder to handle than rattlesnakes. I'm going to go with two out of five, but I strongly consider it a one here as well. They're just not easy or safe animals to handle. Hence the Kevlar gloves. For starters, these guys are more like lizards to deal with than like most snakes. This will also manifest itself in the care category. This is a fast, active, diurnal snake that is not chill to handle. These guys can wriggle away from you and get lost. Many are defensive and can bite. If you've ever tried to handle racers from the genus Colubert, just expect that. Oh, and did I mention that they're venomous? I did? Okay, well, they're venomous. Again, this doesn't mean that they will kill you, but you don't want this bite. It kills mice very quickly, and the reality is that there simply isn't much data about how bad it is. And those fangs, while in the rear, are highly mobile, almost like their cousins the stiletto snakes. This is a difficult and mildly dangerous animal to handle, and it is better to plan on handling them only when it's necessary. If you want a similar snake that is super handleable, may I introduce you to their cousins, the African house snakes. In fact, I want to I do a, a thing. 
Okay. I'd like to take a moment to ask you guys for help with something very, very important. We last year did a reaction video to crazy animal skeletons that uh, I was able to find at various Halloween shops. And I found some that are terrible and some that were actually darn good. And there's something to learn from both. But I would like to do this again, and I need your help. I've exhausted all of my local Halloween shops. But down in the description, we have an address to which you can send things. Please send us your crazy Halloween animal skeletons, and there's a very good chance they will show up in this year's rendition of that video. I'm excited to see what you've got. When it comes to care, I want to start off by saying, don't get one of these. Not now. If the person from whom you are buying an Egyptian false cobra knows less about them than you do after watching this video, then the snake is wild caught. And most of them are. And they will be riddled with parasites, and unless you know exactly how to deal with a parasite-ridden, stressed, sick, dehydrated, and emaciated snake, it will die on you in a short order. Just don't. But there are lots of great breeders working with them right now, so in the coming years, they probably will be available captive bred. So when it comes to care, I'm speaking to future you, when you can get one captive bred, and not current you who cannot, at least probably not. When it comes to care, we give the captive bred Egyptian false cobra a score of 4 out of 5. But before you get one and chuck it in a rack with your ball pythons, I want you to stop. This isn't a snake. I mean, it is, but for all intents and purposes, this is a desert lizard. And phylogenetically, I have no issues with that statement either. These lizard-like snakes come from hot and dry deserts. They like space and heat. UVB is also almost certainly a good idea. Just get a nice enclosure for a bearded dragon with a good lid and nowhere for an athletic, persistent shoelace to escape, and you're probably pretty close to right on. A hot basking spot, again, bearded dragon hot, can be provided with a heat lamp. Be sure that the other side of the enclosure is considerably cooler, just like with any other reptile. They regulate their body temperatures behaviorally. If it's hot everywhere, they will cook. Sand mixes make good substrate, perhaps with excavator clay. Provide a water bowl and hides on the warm and cool sides of the enclosure. And feed them vertebrates of appropriate size. Lizards and rodents will be eaten with gusto. Just keep an eye on their weight. They uh, do love to eat. When it comes to hardiness, it's really a bit hard to say how things will go for captive bred Egyptian false cobras. For wild caught, I would put hardiness around a 1 or a 2. But I'll bump it up to a 4 for captive bred, though that's a bit speculative. I'm basing that mostly on the success that highly experienced keepers have had once they get them past all of their parasites and stresses associated with importation. The main health issues seem to have to do with keeping them too cool or too wet. In other words, too much like snakes and not enough like bearded dragons. Respiratory infections and other health issues can occur under those conditions. Airflow is also very important. When it comes to availability, we give the Egyptian false cobra a score of 1 out of 5. I've seen them at expos in the past, and they're often available online, but it is much easier to locate a Gaboon Viper or a True Cobra than one of these guys, especially captive bred. And if the Lacey Act amendments associated with the American Competes Act go through, they will become impossible to find for most Americans and difficult to place for most breeders that successfully produce them. So one for now, but zero could be on the horizon. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Egyptian False Cobra a score of 3 out of 5. The snake is neither super expensive nor super cheap. The rest will basically be the costs associated with a bearded dragon. The same three to four foot enclosure with good ventilation and a quality lid. The same kind of lighting. Thermostat is definitely a good idea with all of that. Substrate, hides, a water bowl. And, and we'll have links to all of this down in the description. Of course, if you get an import especially, vet bills and parasite treatments will also be required. This will push the costs up more and the probable lifespan of your snake way, way down. Just, just wait for a captive bread. And this is why, overall, we give the Egyptian false cobra a score of 2.8 out of 5. And that is assuming you get one captive bred. Wild caught drops all the way down to just don't out of 5. The reality is that for a snake that stands up with a hood and looks like an angry cobra, this is a pretty good score. That's more than a whole point better than the other standing hooded false cobra that we've covered. You know, the king cobra. And this is a much better pet than a king cobra. But for a snake, I wouldn't really want one. It's just a cool looking noodle that needs a lot of heat, a lot of space, and that you really can't handle. 
And if that's what you want, or you just have to have a snake that stands and hoods and probably won't kill you, then the Egyptian false cobra might be the perfect pet snake for you. But I'd rather have a false water cobra. And I do. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Sorry to bash your snake. <laughs> <laughs> Cobra tie. <laughs> also, thank you so much for sending the Cobra tie. Cobra tie.